what I think the people banging want. tunes. Those banging tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Tea Break podcast. As always, I'm your host Adam, and across from the mic from me today is the legend that is Mike. Legend? I didn't. Th- I didn't think I'd garnered enough renown to, you know, warrant a rumor. A rumor. <laughs> I'm ba- Legend? I'm, I'm barely Where a, was this? I'm barely a myth. <laughs> <laughs> barely exist at all. No, thank you very much for joining me as always. How are you? Very good. Have you had a good Christmas? No. I want to say it was... You've got a drone. How dare you? As, How dare you go as, no? Well, to be fair, I, I don't, I'm not one of those who you know, go out at Christmas. I'd rather no. it not happen. No, I'm the same. We're, I hate. We're, we're English, aren't we? Christmas yeah. can just go to hell. We, yeah, it means we nothing like, to us. Why sit? In a, why spend a day with a room, sitting in a room with a bunch of people who you can't stand? <laughs> yeah, and you are forced to be nice. Yeah. Why bother? We're miserable people over here <laughs> on our tiny little island. We're isolationists <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> yes, we import Christmas from overseas, and even then, only for an immediately good price. So. On to our first segment, though. We're very proud of this. I'm very proud of this, aren't I? It's called Wherever We Are, Have We Been? Get, get it? Cause, uh, yeah, yeah you, I, you get it because you were here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were here when I came up with it. But we're going to talk about VR games and what's been on our radar lately. So, Mike, wherever we are, wherever we are, have you been lately? I did a little bit on Ultra Wings, which was a very surreal experience. For the like ten minutes I played of it, very. I see what you mean. Where it's the first experience where it's I'm in a plane. Yeah, you actually feel like you're in a plane. The X-wing mission had moments where my mind went, and it's like, oh, I'm in an X-wing. But then, you know, something would happen, and it would break that, and I'm just playing a game. Yeah, Ultra Wings is. It's very different. I'm. You put your headset on. It's I'm in a plane. If I fall out of this, I'm pretty sure I'll hurt myself. Yeah, there's something really surreal about tricking. There's something Ultra Wings has managed to do there. I think I think it's... I don't know, but it might be the graphics. Because I found that Windlands was... Has well, that, yeah, a similar feeling. Has a it. very similar feeling of very deep immersion. And I think it's because it seems very believable. Rather than being... Oh, you're having a, sip, a cheeky sip of your coffee. Yeah. Cheeky sip of your coffee. Drinking coffee, but no, it feels. I think it's the immersion because it's all. It all looks the same. Yeah. So although you kind of, it doesn't look real. You you can sort of fool yourself into sort of going. That over there is a tree. I know it's a tree because the one over here looks like a tree. I've learnt that. Done. It's weird because talking about like games like Windlands, Ultra Wings, they're very simplistic, very cell. Sh- one say sheltered, but it's sort of cartoony and blocky. Yeah. And then you got Resident Evil, and it's like, I played that in VR. Granted, I haven't played it as much as you have. <laughs> no, you haven't played it. No, go on. <laughs> but I've played it, but it's like, yeah, I'm scared. These things are scary, but it's like, I'm still playing a game. And I don't know if that is because of the graphics, because it's like, Windlands, they have this sort of sense of disbelief. You're no longer in your world. But yet, I don't know if because it looks so real. It's something to, so you're, you're, you're saying it's something to do with, it's too. It's the aim to be realistic is more immersion breaking than just going. You're in a cartoon and it yeah. being very. See, that's kind of what I was saying a minute ago. It's all more. It, it's all the same. So because Windlands, like you were saying, it's all done in a very low poly style. A tree over there is a tree. A tree over here is a tree. Your brain can make sense of it very yeah. quickly. Whereas maybe something like Resident Evil, where when lots you, of things are happening, yeah. you've got things you don't know what the shape, you know, you just see yeah, that's just, a yeah. mass and you're what is that? And what is that? The fact that it, the fact that you're in a thing going, what is it? Makes you go, well, it's not real, is it? Yeah. Adam? Or Mike, your brain yeah, your goes, brain it can't goes, be real. You, you know mo- the most <laughs> of the things that exist on this planet. This is a thing you don't recognise, so therefore it can't exist. Yeah, there's <laughs> something there's something very fundamental about the way that the brain works and deals with VR to whether or not something is immersive. I like the yeah, that's a very good point. It's like you, what do it's you very think true. of the bridge crew? Does it have that similar feel? Where Ooh. is it like Resident Evil, where it's almost too realistic, mm. where it's almost immersion breaking because of it, or bridge is it crew gets is... away with it because you know it's sort of like a fantasy and you sort of know the law behind it, so your brain can fill in the gaps, as it were. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I like Star Trek anyway, as you know. So Voyager, Voyager for life. Um, Janeway is our captain. Janeway is our captain. Uh, <laughs> But when playing Star Trek, the game, 
I oh, I don't know actually. That's really interesting. Did you feel like you were part of that world? I, I or... went because the ship that you're in. Because this is going to have to take a bit of explaining. I'm sure that if you haven't, audience, right, listeners, viewers, if you're on YouTube, uh, if you haven't played it or you haven't seen anyone playing it, I have got a video up on the channel of me and Darren doing it if you want some context. But you're in an actual ship and out the front of your screen where you have the view screen, the classic giant window at the front of the cockpit, that looks really good when because you can make it glass so it's just a window. Yeah. So then when you're turning and you see everything moving and the ship lists slightly as it goes around a corner... You feel that like you do in Ultra Wings. You feel the whole ship tilt and yeah. you go, oh, the, the ground beneath me is moving. And it kind of works because I know Star Trek, like yeah. you say, and I know that in Star Trek you have gravity in the ship. Yeah. You've got... Um, you know, it's... Inertia artificial. dampeners. There you go, inertia yeah. dampeners. And they stop uh, you... Gravity pl Anti-gravity plating. Anti-gravity plate. plating. But the inertia dampeners <laughs> stop you from feeling the tilt of yeah. the ship. So you only see it out the window. So you don't feel anything, and because I'm sat in my sofa, uh, on my in my living room, it doesn't. It feels correct. It feels the way that it should feel. Because, but at the same time, like you say, the fact that you that it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite match what I'm expecting. But the if you're going into like physically how it looks and whether that like the graphics are immersive, that's a really tricky one. Because it's a really interesting looking game. Now it you really pointed is. that out I, to me. The faces all look the same. Yeah, oh, you're never looking at the faces. You can pick to be a Klingon or, or a Vulcan, so it's, Vulcan it's interesting human, enough. I feel like it's lacking diversity. Can you not? I pick? hate I've to made say that. Up. I hate to say this for a Ubisoft game, it's but Star Trek Bridge Crew is lacking diversity. It's true. I can't. Where be... are the Klingons? The Ferengi? The Romulans? Oh Reds, my God! The Borg. Imagine being a Ferengi <laughs> oh, in that would Star be Trek. Awesome. <laughs> in Star Trek Bridge Crew. Oh my God! What I wouldn't give. Uh, what I wouldn't give. Just they're not even well. They're briefly mentioned in Voyager. No, they are. In no, Voyager. they, they, have, they a have a couple of episodes. They have a planet in Voyager, don't they? No, two, no, two don't. of them. Oh took yeah, over, the two yes, of them. Yes, yeah, I remember when they became trick, gods. They trick a civilization into worshiping them. See, that's <laughs> what I mean. There are a lot of things. The new Star Trek, I kind of like, like ships being on an angle. Oh when yeah, they, yeah. Where they where they meet the, in space on an angle because yeah, on the old visually, Star Trek they always met on the same plane. Visually, I think the new Star Wars is great. Trek. Star Trek is great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that they're concentrating far too much on the action rather than one-to-one -one diplomatic missions. See, I would have preferred first contact. That. Yeah. See, that's the sort of thing I want to see. And they're concentrating too much on the films rather than what made the series popular: the first contact missions, the buggers up, the wars that happen over minor, new, you know, minute dis disagreements. And the game is just action guns, and that put me off it slightly. Well, I do... Forgive my long rant on the same subject. Yeah, yeah, oh, this is a touchy subject for Mike, is, is Star Trek slash Star Wars. Um, I just want a continuity <laughs> to everything. No, I'm the same. See, that's one of my downfalls. I think that might be why the immersion is broken a lot on the Star Trek Bridge crew, is because there's a lot of times where I'm sat there going, I wish I could tell this person to do something. Oh, wait, I can. I can take over their body. <laughs> and then suddenly I'm not the captain anymore. I'm I'm driving. And that's because I'm only playing it with two people online. So you, there's uh, positions yeah, missing. Okay, I, I'm, I'm pretty but, sure but at the same with the more time, people, yeah, yeah, with more people, funny, I yeah. wouldn't need to do that. But I do feel like, like I would like to walk around. I would like to go, oh, I'm just going to go and... Say say that all say, you know like job simulator. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice if rather than teleporting from seat to seat, you could just walk to that yeah uh, that that desk that they were just desks because you're not really stood up in the real world unless you want to. So you yeah. could sit down on your sofa or whatever, and then you could log in and you'd be stood there as oh, a character. It's but very then, much one of them games where you need to be sat down to be yes, playing. Yes, well you do need to anyway because they're all in seats. But imagine that they're stood up at their desks like they yeah. are in original, like in Kirk's, where they're all stood at a desk typing away. I'd rather that because then if something goes wrong, you could run a ship with just two people. Yeah, you'd have a. You'd ha I hate to bring up uh, Voyager again, but you'd have an excellent remake of the episode where the two holograms have to oh, run the Prometheus. The, the Prometheus episode. Where two holograms have to run an entire ship by themselves, and they're just running around, going, "I've sorted it." Click. 
beep, 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 what does that mean? And then they run to the next desk and go, ah, yes, we sorted out the shields, we're, char- we're overcharging the warp core. And then they go, oh, wait, I'll go to the desk where the warp core is controlled. And they're just running around yeah. trying to sort it as they arise. And then if you had five people online, that, that would, would all be, be fine. Th- chaos, if there's just the two of you, it would be the same thing. I think there's a little bit of restriction in it that I'd rather wasn't there. I basically now that they've got that I'd say I'm going to say bridge crew is a proof of concept in my I mind. feel like I feel like it's Ubisoft's best attempt at trying to do something it cash their... in on the Star Trek franchise well that too because they must have the rights somewhere along the line but also I think it's the fact that they've been trying a lot have Ubisoft I'm not normally a Ubisoft person they do good games and I'm the so I'm a very level hang heavy yeah you I'm dip very, in and out. I dip in and out. I'm a very level-headed person, though. Like, if a game comes out and I like it, I really don't care who's made it. I'll play it. Yeah. I'm more than happy to play something that's well-made. If Because it, it doesn't really matter who the company is, I find. As long as they make the good game. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it comes down... I like to follow the artists and the directors and people who move the around. Behind the behind-the-scenes. behind-the-scenes people. So if there's an artist making an asset in a game that I like, I'll see what the game is and hear their opinion on the Twitter or whatever's going on. So I tend to get into games sort of the backwards way rather than looking it all up on, on the, the internet. On the customer front. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I sort of see it from behind the scenes a little bit and mm-hmm. then I tend to get interested there. But Ubisoft obviously have done quite a lot that have caught my eye recently, including... Um, uh, is it Beyond Good and Evil? Two. Two? That's, wanna... that's Ubisoft Montreal, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, it's, it might not be it's Montreal, Montreal, France. F- no, I think Montreal's Canada. Canada. Where's, don't, which which, which one's the studio in Paris, anyway? The, the Ubisoft studio in Paris also did, after the, now that they're working on, you know, but before they did Beyond Good and Evil 2, or maybe at the same time, wouldn't, you know, don't know how time frames go, but they were also doing Eagle Flight. Yeah. which is a VR game set in Paris, which I got. I really didn't like that. I didn't like that either. The novelty of that one wore off rather quickly because it was very distracting. Yes. I didn't realise how distracting it would be to have a beak. A beak in front of your face. I kind of liked that, but what I I'm leading on to is <laughs> the, um, that original game, Eagle Flight, mm. was all sort of simplified. And the had that. It had that bridge yeah, crit. literally, it had that simplified sort of look that Windlands and Ultra Wings and lots of games have. So it might just be that after they did that and they got their they you know, they got the ropes down, they went, right, we've done a flying game. We certainly understand movement. So Maybe we could do something sat down with a controller and obviously they've then worked on doing Star Trek Bridge Crew, which has yeah. come out and it's a lot prettier. So I don't know if it's like a stepping stone and you can't have one without the other. So I feel bad if I was to say Star Trek Bridge Crew didn't do it for me. Because without considering Eagle Flight no. And other games like it, I can't go. You can't really. Knock I can't it. really knock it because it, it's a very difficult time. Not for VR. VR is having the best time ever. Oh it's yeah, doing so but well. It's like I'm over the moon. What do you do? But it is a very experimental time period. It's like the PS1 times, or be, dare I say it, the NES. Because literally, we are finding new ways to play games in VR. Like, I've never ever thought I could sit and take a bomb apart in front of me by just turning around a box in VR, and my fair, mate reading off of a piece of paper could be a playable game. But it is. <laughs> Don't talk and nobody explodes is one of my favourite and most entertaining things. I was and, going to say, yeah. if um, we didn't like know that. Fallout and Skyrim was coming to VR. Well, that would have well, been... well, no, no. I suppose no. Officially, no, we didn't. No, no. We had an inkling. Yeah, we. I had, just don't we want to speculated. do. I don't guessed. want to do you an injustice because you had a fairly good guess that it was coming about two years beforehand. Yeah, we before anyone announced, it. I said that it will be their most recent game. They said it has to be. It has Skyrim, to happen. And we'll get there. And luckily, and then we, two years yeah. later, Bethesda went. Oh, we're bringing Skyrim to VR, and I went, I called it. it. Yeah, it was no (laughs) surprise to us. Lots of people were wondering about it, but we saw the adverts in the background popping together. We saw saw bloody editing here and there, and and there was talk in forums and different people. It was interesting. It was an interesting time to be alive, just before Skyrim came out. It was like before, going back to those times... I don't, you know, before I made that epic guess of, oh, we'll get Skyrim eventually. Yeah, I was let honestly, it, <laughs> it was going to be, I didn't think it'd be a very long time before I could have an experience like that. Yes, Walking Skyrim, around yeah. in a full world, and it's like, 
it'd be like it was like playing the game. No leash, no. You follow this path. How are you finding the controls for Skyrim? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Took a bit to get used to. But good. And I'm, <laughs> I'm making a couple of errors with the move where I go overextend myself a bit with it and. But overall. But overall. You're adjusting. It yeah, takes. I suppose it takes a bit of time. And I've had without time my dream it. of the Omni Ring, so I can actually run in oh, Skyrim. Don't let it go. I right. don't want one. <laughs> I hate this. Everyone's like, oh, with the wait for the Omni Ring, and I just don't agree. I really don't agree. No, but without that, the controllers and the locomotion I don't move think I, I, so. is pleasant and In enjoyable. my opinion, in my personal opinion. Skyrim's nailed it because you just That's use what the I'm left saying, hand. That's they're as... fine. That's yeah, yeah. Thing. But I mean, we don't. I don't think an Omni Ring would work because even if you had that for Skyrim, we've had this chat before. But even if you had one and you walk from one end of the world to the other in Skyrim, you go through a door or you sit down. You can't sit down in an Omni Ring. What if you want to ride a horse? That's going to be weird. <laughs> what if what if cutscenes are happening and your character is thrown to the floor? You're just going to be stood standing. It's you know, there are loads of things which won't work in an Omni Ring. I think it's a really good idea. For, for those of you who don't know, an Omni Ring is this magical ability to walk on the a, spot. a treadmill you can plug into your VR that simulates walking. Yes, which is ba in production. You can go look it up if you're really curious, but I personally think that it's a bit of a farce. I, I, I mean, it, it, I won't knock it if it comes out and it does really well and we see, like, in four years' time they bring out the PSVR 2 move controller twos yeah well, and threes threes and the and the ps4 walk pad <laughs> you know but i i would be surprised because it i don't see how logical it would be to have all of those things i don't think an omni ring is necessary and it only works for if you had walking sims then go for it but honestly things like ultra wings and skyrim have taught me that you can do driving games flying games and fighting games and all these other games with just your hands because in real life all you have are your hands I'd love to play a driving game other than Ultra Wings where you can grab the steering wheel I was talking to some people on Facebook the other day yeah hashtag go check out not hashtag yeah hashtag on Facebook do you that's, yeah, that's uh, Twitter that's the Twitter sphere no but on go check us out on our um, Facebook sofa of Adam if you want to join the conversation but uh, we were talking about Wipeout and how that's coming, and I'm over the moon for Wipeout. So excited! Yeah, I could... But I would love to play that <laughs> with steering wheel. And you and me were talking about it, weren't we? Is it won't have a steering wheel? No, though. it would have. Uh, if anything, it'll have a plane yoke. Yeah, exactly. A yoke. It should have like a, a V, which or whatever. I don't know. I've never been in a Wipeout ship other than in the PlayStation Home. Back in the day on the PS3 where you could, where there was a wipeout area and you could walk up to the ships and I sort of had a look, but I don't remember what it was. I might mm. have to YouTube the room to see what the interiors looked like in mm. the PlayStation 3 home to see if they've been carried over to the PS4 VR make. But I'm really curious what those cockpits will be because part of me wants to just go, I really want an update in a month's time, two months time to just go use your hands, steer... <laughs> Just grab each side of the steering wheel, look like an idiot in your living room and enjoy it. Because there are so many games where it just gives you hands. And I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. Rec, rec Room, for instance. You can drive a remote control car and you just need your hands. Admittedly, that is tilt controls. Yeah. But there's, there's lots of things you can do. I don't think... Uh, I've been... My eyes have been opened to the to, idea of just using your hands to do everything. To be fair, Sony has... No, I, I'm glad that the PSVR was so cheap, mainly because the fact that Sony has recycled a lot of the tools for the PS4. They have. They've done well, because the PS... I mean, the move controllers that we are using are from the PS3. The three. And obviously, it's very impressive that back then, the, the, they, they were up to scratch. Because yeah. the latency, the light tracking... The speed of which those controllers can actually relay that information as well. I mean, it's being picked up by the camera and it's all being done by the box to work out the actual dots of light. Yeah. But the controllers do have a gyro in them. They do have t tilt functionality. They do vibrate. They have the ball on the top for the light tracking. And they are completely PSVR compatible. And these were made... Ten years ago. I mean, literally, yeah. I have a memory of being in a caravan back in the day, so I must have been, like, 11 or 12. I can't remember. No, I... the PS3 weren't out then. 
Oh no, no, it was. I remember being no, in secondary because I, I had was the PS2 then. I remember. I'd not. I'll look it up. It wasn't long after because I remember being in secondary school, which would have been two thousand and. It might have been two thousand and five. And 2005, I was playing on um, the PS3 with my mate because he had the new uh, fighting. Was what was like... it? What's that one that's coming out? Not on Emusha. The one with the sword. Soul Calibur? Soul Calibur. And I was playing Soul Calibur with him, and that was on the PS3. I'm certain of it. Little Big Planet 2, for instance. And Little Big Planet 1 was on the PS3, and I was playing that in secondary school. So that must have been out about then. There you go. I had to think about that. I nearly thought, end, yeah, it might have been. The, it might have been the tail end, but it was around then, and that's when these came out. So it is. I'm sorry, I'm holding move controllers, but there's no point. You can't see them. But that's when the move controllers came out. So it's impressive that they've held up. Yeah. Since then, till now, and that they're still like you know, Vive and Oculus have gone. Here are our brand new controllers. We spent five years developing a this, controller, and, and then they're PS4. Totally just going. Oh, forgot about these. I forgot I had these in the cupboard. I don't suppose these are up to scratch and all <laughs> and match all the standards, do they? Says. Because if <laughs> they do, we could save millions. We could, we literally have warehouses full of these. It's like, <laughs> quick. <laughs> You Literally millions. Yeah. <laughs> just boxes and boxes. We have a continent called Movetopia, which is just <laughs> off the border of Kyoto. And that is where we keep them. We would love to sell them, says says ten years ago. PS3 oh. control. Oh, it's funny though. No, Bless. it is. But they are amazing and it is great that they've managed to keep up that sort of standard of play because it is they are vital. I think move controllers are one of the main things that make a game seem real. Mm. To bring us back round to what makes a game realistic in the also, first place. Sort of going back to Ubisoft, I'm thinking... I was just thinking... Imagine Eagle Flight if you had claws, and I think I'd be alright then. If you had an arm. Because your hands sort of sit below you anyway. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. If they... So they could be your claws then, you could actually grab things, and if you move your hands too far away from your head, they wouldn't work or they'd stay there. Because that's something, again, that... Um, that I can say that Ubisoft have nailed in Star Trek. Because if you reach out with your arm, and you reach further than your in-game arm can, do, can go, your in-game arm just goes straight and stays there. Mm. And won't go any further. Which is brilliant, because it makes you sort of bring your real hand back, and sort of match very naturally with where the in-game hand is, which stops you overshooting things and, and pushing. So something like that I'd like to see. So say you go flight, mm. and you get your hands, and those become your talons underneath your body. It'd be like puppetry. It'd be something you've never done before, like using your hands as feet. Would that still be immersive? Or is that pushing the boat too far? Because part suppose. of me would love to try and see a game which goes, your head is one character, your right hand is a dog, and your left hand is a cat, or something. And it's like, you're a god, and you can physically move your controllers through a space yeah. to remote control These two characters. characters. That would be weird. It'd become like a strange puppetry where each hand is no longer a hand, it's something else. Well, seeing as I would say... But I suppose like, Moss is kind you know, Moss is kind of an example really. of that, but that's not... You're not playing that character, or are you? Or you're, you're looking on a buzz sort of solving the puzzle so yeah. this character can walk through. I suppose you're playing God, they're just the main character. It's yeah. not the same, but you know what I mean. It's a, 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 pu yeah. a puppetry, a break of being human. I, I was going to say, with... Um, I'm sipping my tea. We're getting some like weird and sometimes out oh. there games in VR. So maybe a game, maybe not Eagle Flight per se, but something like Eagle Flight with mm. the puppetry thing. It would be very interesting. I'd like that. I'd like but that. But no, I was just thinking that Ubi with, with Star Trek big um, um, Ubi. bridge. Ubisoft. Ubi? Good old Ubi. Sorry. <laughs> Sounds very 90s. Carry on. So, They're like a cute with creature. The Star Trek, with the Star Trek nations, it's like, will we get any more VR or is that it for Star Trek? Are we going to get the, you know, the What, Star Sky... Trek VR 2 yeah. down the line? Are we going to get a Skyrim-esque you know, wide universe, you can get different ships, I all the races I, are there, I or honest... are we going to get another piddly trapped inside the bridge, and that's the game. Because it's like, being on the bridge is fine, but there's like other parts of the ship, there's engineering. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying earlier, is, um, it'd be great to walk around and actually get a feel for it, but I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when. And how well Bridge Crew did after No, 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 I don't think it matters because somebody else will have seen Bridge Crew and they'll be working on that now. They'll yeah. be sat there going, I want to walk around 
the entire ship. Maybe they go, oh, we don't have the rights. I'm going to build my own ship and just build my own universe quickly, quickly. And uh, I'll build my own universe in the next five to ten years. And I will release it whenever the PS4 six is out well, I, and, don't know, I don't know so but <laughs> it's a matter of time i don't yeah. think it's a matter of if because i mean i'm a real fan of ready player one we've mentioned i mentioned it every now and then in my videos because it's a real shining glory of writing don't audiobook guys go get an audiobook of that listen to it if you like vr you're missing out if you haven't read ready if you player like one. vr or pop culture if, don't, either way, if you just even a little bit of either, go read the book. But in the book, they talk about things like having a virtual space and things like uh, rec room. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> so something simple like rec room is probably more likely to me to catch on and to make and make waves because you can walk around in that. So I'm sort of waiting for rec room two, you know, or something mm. along those lines. Like the PlayStation Home, there's something. There's something more surreal about having hands and a head and a body in a virtual space and just mm. being there for a bit without a plot. So I do think that there's no challenge. I don't think it will be a long time, but I don't think it's a matter of... I don't think it's a matter of yes, if... It's a matter of when. About, but a matter of when, because it's already happening. Yeah. People, you can go into Rec Room right now and build your own, vo and build your own Voyager if you really wanted to. Might take you a little while, but... <laughs> You could do it. I don't think it would fly, but you could easily make one that you could walk around yeah. for your own amusement. You know, if you and find a room big enough to do that big of a recreation. <laughs> well, and you just go to the park, I guess, and then just draw big squares because you could walk on those and stand on them and all the rest of it. You can build mm. stairs, and technically, I suppose you could build a lift. I saw someone build a car. Quite impressive, but it wasn't it all flimsy. It was a, well. They built the car box. They left the holes in it, and then they built the. Uh, wheels on the axle and then they sort of passed them through each other and then made it go into an object so it was just bouncing around inside the wheel hub as it were just locked in mm. by the object and then he gave it a push and it kind of rolled down the hill but it, you couldn't be in it or anything it was like a toy car, I mean they've already got full working cars but if you yeah. wanted you could probably build something with a remote control car that you could drive Yeah, I was wondering, I was going to try that at some point it's like lock match the remote control car with like a chair and tag the two together <laughs> sit in the chair and see if you can drive make yeah, a little cut drive like, yourself around i don't I, know I'm at, <laughs> all i can see when you were describing that is like old printed images of like chinese like That's alchemists funny. with like rockets strapped, strapped to the bottom of the, of the chairs. chairs but it's like change the image with rockets with you on a race yeah <laughs> so it's funny because in my head i was picturing the scene from mr bean where he puts the armchair on the top of his mini and he's <laughs> driving it with little ropes and pulleys from there and he's like driving down the road because the car's full of stuff. Doesn't matter. Ah, British, yeah. British pop culture references. Yes. So with all of that nonsense out of the way, we can check the PSN store, the UK PSN store, and see what sales and such have caught our eye. Did you ever look at some sales, Mike? Did you look at any on your... Have you got them? Yes, I've got them. Have you got them? I'll, I can always go to these ones first. I'll uh, check these ones out. So what games were coming out? We've got Bravo Team, which is by Supermassive Games. Did you know that Super... The, you know Bravo, the Bravo Team? With the gun, it's basically Counter-Strike. I've Counter heard of it. Did but... you know that was made by the people that did Tumble and Until Dawn Rush of Blood? Okay, so I won't hold my breath. Well, it's weird, <laughs> though, isn't it? Because I thought that, because Tumble was okay. You know, you're stacking blocks. Yeah. And that was almost... I th Now, I'm going to get slashed in the comments if this is wrong. I think that was a, that came out a long time ago, Tumble, and it was a regular I game with the camera. I heard it was like a PS3 yeah, game. Yeah, I think it was, and you were just stacking well, blocks, and it was meant to be a clever thing with the light tracking back yeah. in the day. with the And then they brought it out for VR later. But to have done that, then to have done the roller coaster game, which is which just be a rail our, shooter. Yeah, a rail it shooter. It doesn't really matter that it's part of Until Dawn, but just a rail <laughs> shooter. And then to go into building COD so, with so, guns. So what's going seems to like quite a leap. So what I'm imagining is you're in a tank while buildings tumble down instead of <laughs> collapsing. <laughs> just lots of wood. <laughs> So there's lots of people running around with guns, except everything's made of wooden blocks. Yes. <laughs> How did this happen? People are going to go, I didn't expect this. Go, from the makers of Tumble. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> no, but... Uh, and it's all on a rail shooter. But uh, 
I do I do worry about this game a little bit because I've seen an awful lot of good things, and I'm I'm all aboard the hype train. I'm the first one to set the brakes, put the brakes on, and go stop. This might be bullshit because I have had my concerns from the day one. I've seen it being played, and I'm wondering how well it can cope with that many people online at once. I get concerned about any game. Which is online with you've got servers. Because yeah. I've been playing things like VR carts and... We hear and all sorts of horror stories about there's games all launching sorts of, and the servers buggering yeah, up. Yeah, servers <laughs> bugger up all the time when it comes to VR games. Or so I find. But I, we have a very bad internet connection. Yeah, we're out in the sticks. and On planet Earth, we're out in the sticks in the UK on an island. Especially compared to England. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. We're, we're, we're in the middle of nowhere as part of, as part of the world is concerned, you yeah. know. So, really, this might only be from our point of view. So, I don't want to knock it if you're expecting it to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to playing it. I loved Counter-Strike back in the day. And that's what it looks like. It just looks like Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike Go. I'm looking forward to it. And it's not a discredit to the I game. I do want it to do well. I want it to be good. Because it means we'll get COD next year. Like, COD, if, if this Even goes if well, COD comes out next VR, year, I won't play it. Oh, but are you trying to tell me that you would never play Zombies Mode? And don't lie to me. I would play Zombies Mode, <laughs> but Zombies Mode don't need... In my mind, the Zombie Modes don't need the VR mode, and... No, but what if it did? The There's war no... they're betraying doesn't make me want to go out and buy it. No, but what's wrong with what's wrong with hoping to get more VR games? Oh, like, I... What if it becomes a VR optional, like Resident Evil? What if something like this does well, and people who make COD and, you know, all, you know uh, what was it, Treyarch... And uh, the other one who made yeah, they pass Activision. it Activision and where, and they the all just one. sit down and go, oh well, what we need to do is we need to make this optional. So we'll bring it out that would work, and we get um, you know, someone get someone in to VR. work on a VR port, you know, with with the move controllers or the aim controller, the aim gun, and that could be really good, you know, later down the line to go, oh wow, the whole game is available, or maybe just zombies mode, you know, maybe the next card will just go, ah, oh, zombies mode I can now be done in VR. I that's what I can see if they were going to do it and I had an you know this sort of knowledge that's what I could see them doing first instead of doing taking the leap like Capcom did and going you yeah. can play the whole game in VR I've also, if they were going to do it it's probably going to be zombies yeah yeah that's true I've also noticed that on as far as Bravo team is concerned an active PS Plus membership is required to play online which is a little bit upsetting to me because although I like to keep up with my PS Plus, I appreciate that not everybody can. Yeah. And a lot of games push on the idea of not needing one. GTA. GTA, I don't believe you need one. We've done this before. I think when they launched, you needed one. And then they removed the time, it, didn't they? So you don't need. You needed Plus for Elder Scrolls Online. We did need Plus for Elder Scrolls Online, but we didn't need it for Rec Room. Rec no. Room is free. They've made that point. That's up to the designer. So I feel like there's a bit of a swizz that they're bringing out an online game. It's for PSVR, you need the move controllers, yeah. the aim, and, and a PS Plus course, subscription course. just to go online. Yeah. Apart, but a part of me is not that annoying about the whole PS thing, because I don't think about it, oh, it's blocking me from playing no, certain you get, games. No, 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 because do you, I. Because they give away, like, no, no, games worth it. every yeah. month. And if you work it, if you get the year one, it's about 40 quid, and... You say that month they give out mm. like four AAA games, one being in VR. You got if you downloaded all of them for free, you that's have like two hundred quid you've worth made of a, game. Yeah, it is ridiculous. So I mean, I'm in no way saying it's not worth it. Go get Plus. We have Plus. It's it's like a godsend. I've a, even a updated my Plus. Yeah, VR. only for the one month. Cause yeah, so we I can get the it, Christmas but... sales. But, but um, it's worth saying that I just feel like some games in VR might be pushing it, going, maybe they should try and get away from the PS Plus I so that people can just play. Cause there I was going to say, until v VR is in every home, mm. I reckon hold off on the Plus because that probably will be a barrier to some people. Yes, it will be. Moving swiftly on, though, Moss which is uh, still on its way, apparently, from Polyarch Games. It was one of uh, E3's 2017's brightest stars that shone through as far as VR came. I don't know what it is. This is the game where I've lost interest in. When it came out, I saw the trailers, I went, wow, that looks interesting. I want to play that. Do you not that. want to play Zelda? Because that seems to be what they're going for. Now, I, from the trailers, it looks a bit puzzle platforming. Yeah. But I am assuming that this little mouse, is, he's got his sword and his shield, basically woodland Zelda. 
If you see what I'm yeah, no, saying, but you're, so it's, third, point, it's almost but... third person. You're playing from above. You're giving him help. But I, I don't. Again, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's my thing. Yeah. But it is very pretty. I love the sound design. I've heard it's the music and say, just gone. That's beautiful. Against the game, I don't because it's probably because other games are coming out that. Are... You just got your eye on other things. Yeah. Mm. So it's like I'm a bit concerned because when I, as I said, when this was revealed, I was like, that actually looks unlike a cluster yeah, it doesn't. It looks like a calm, surreal yeah. game that you can just play, a bit like a Zelda game. Or yeah. yeah, and you sort of just go with it, and then it's like, and then other games are coming out, and it's being pushed to my back of my mind, which really does it. A it is a shame, but I don't want to be disappointed when it comes out. Like, yeah, as well. I feel like it would have been a perfect Christmas release if they could have got it out just before Christmas. If, yeah, if they got it out for Christmas, one, I reckon they would have made their money back, which is because if we ter- if 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 when we end up playing it, it starts off in a snow level. And it didn't come out at Christmas. Then they, then I bet if it starts off in a snow level, it was meant to come out at Christmas, as a sort of oh it's snowing, oh yeah. Christmas. Because lots of games do that. Where I've noticed, I've played a few games that come out at Christmas, and they just seem to go, oh we'll just have the first level with snow, mm. or we'll have snow somewhere near the beginning. Just so it feels a bit Christmassy. It's good. And then when it comes out later or it gets delayed, you go, it's odd. Why is the beginning of the game set in winter? It's like, <laughs> oh, well, it was just it was just an idea we had. It got delayed. Mm. So I'm kind of hoping Moss doesn't fall off of the radar. But it is coming. It does look really good. Uh, you're, it's a, a whole, it's quite, it's a gorgeous expanse filled with myth and magic. And there's uh, lots of time to go and have a look at everything. You're going to be able to really explore the world and get a look at things in detail. I think you play like a big mask, don't you? From the E3 trailer? Yeah. It was like a reflection and you saw that you were a, a face with hands. I'm hoping you have move controllers. It Again, if you're sat like there a with a controller, happened. I'll feel a bit miffed. Because I'd like to reach into the world and really interact with the little mouse. But I haven't seen that in the trailers. I can't say that I remember watching the trailers and seeing a hand reaching across and picking him up or anything. No. And I feel like that's a real... That's like a barrier between you and the world. Lots of games are you and the controller looking in. When you've yeah. got hands, you're there. You can like touch the world and you can interact Pick with it. it. Up with... That'd be nice. I'd like it that. Would be. But I just don't know if... Uh, no, I can. just hope it doesn't get lost. Oh, one thing I wanted to add before we move on. Female protagonist. Viva la female power and all that. <laughs> Quill. Oh. That's the name of the mouse. <laughs> it's a female protagonist. The mouse in uh, Moss is a, is a girl. Oh. That's why she's got, uh, uh, she's got like the poison ivy thing on one hand. And I think it's a sort of... Well, I think it is like meant to be a sort of poison ivy thing. So she's like a plant mouse. I've only heard... Of sort of rumours of this, but looking at the trailer recently, I have noticed that it's all leaves on one hand. So it's like a glove or sleeve. Yeah, so I think it's a very, I think it's a nice touch. I think it will be good. It's also good for the kids. I think it is a nice kid-friendly game. Yeah, for... For us, it might not be. For teenagers. Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose, because children shouldn't be in VR headsets. No, because that annoys me, because I was like, I saw Voltron, the trailer for the VR game. And I'm thinking... As far as I've not seen Voltron, I know of it, I've not seen it. What's Voltron? Uh, it started life off as a Japanese anime. Imagine Power Rangers. Yeah. But basically all the Zords are feline based. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. On on VR. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 and um, yeah, what's it called? Is it called Voltron? Voltron. Yeah, actually, is that what the game Legendary called? Defenders. Yeah, VR. Voltron Legendary Defenders. Right, and from what I saw, the game looks good, but I'm like, as far as I'm aware, this is for like the six to seven age demographic, you know, the, when you're into the big robots and you, you I suppose it's, so it's a children's cartoon made into a VR experience. And I'm thinking, but it's like, you've got to be 12 years old, unless you're like me, you know, a grown unless man who's like never me. grown up. Yeah, unless you're like me and love anime and, and Dragon cartoons, Ball and cartoons and all of that, really then this, this is perfect for you. But if you're the age demographic that this you know program is aimed at, you're like, you shouldn't be allowed to play this because it says when you turn on the VR headset, you've got to be at least 12 and over. <laughs> yeah, I get a bit fiddly on this because I think it's all down to parenting. That I think anyone who wants to put their kid in the VR headset for five ten minutes is fine. Yeah, I think it's just worth that, that everyone needs to take responsibility for the fact I that reckon... we really don't know. I mean, I get a headache every now and yeah. then, and I've been playing it for a year. But that's just that is just the price I pay. Yeah. I don't know if that's you know. I think I I'm if, all right with that. If but you're I going love to VR. Put a child in VR, I'd say stay stick away from the Vive and all that. Until you've got like six months with the gear VR. 
get oh, something yeah, I used say that's to that true. close to your eyes first. If you're going to get a kid into VR, you should just get them a little Google Cardboard or something and get them into the idea Cause, first. Because yeah. you're right, I think it is a lot of strain on the eyes. and I think, But but that's not for us to say. I no, think, there's, like I think if anyone's curious, go and Google it. Oh, Make yeah. an informed decision for yourself your kids and whoever else is around you in VR because it's important for your own health that you know what you're doing I with mean, your own I mean, they give you things. enough every time they t you turn the console on, they go, have you spoken to a doctor yet? Yes, to be fair, every, <laughs> every single time we do, we make that joke. Mike, you can't play this game. Leave me alone! So, <laughs> the epilepsy is only in my hands! It's only in my hands! <laughs> so, oh, but that does make me laugh. But uh, what's next? You were having a look at this, wasn't I, you? It's No More Heroes? Uh, oh, no, No, no Heroes, heroes Allowed. allowed. Hey. It's an RTS sort of um, game. Mm? where essentially, You play a god of destruction? Yeah, it's essentially dungeons. Yeah. But I assume instead of being all underground and you bring your armies up, you start off land yeah. defending your oh, evil it's like heroes. it's like those games on mobile where yeah. you're... Yeah, yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it. But I, I confused it because I don't know if it's connected to that series that was on the Wii called... I think it was called No More Heroes or No Heroes Pfft, I've Allowed. I, I've no idea. Which I would had like doubt a, a light it. No More Heroes was about a, a, a guy with a sword. I yeah, don't think these are related. Yeah, a fluorescent light bulb lightsaber. They are not <laughs> related. This is completely separate, I assure you. But yeah, you. It, look, <laughs> it looks interesting. It kind of, it's, it's got... It's, oh. What on earth made you think that they were the same? Oh, they have a very Is it just the name? title? Yeah. I was going to say, because the gameplay at no point should oh, yeah. I, would, would I have guessed. But that no, they were. it's basically like Evil Genius and Dungeon. And... I suppose you're just looking at, yeah, you're just looking after a small army and keeping it moving. And that's good. You like that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I like, you like my a small management. RTS. Yeah, you like management sims. Then again, you, you're always playing RimWorld and that, Yeah, RimWorld, Prison Architect. Yeah, they keep me good. Well, as soon as we know more about that one, one will let you know because I don't think that one's even on pre-order yet as far mm. as I'm aware and there's not much on it. Next we have Abduction which I remember talking about a little <coughs> while ago on it's the Tea Break from, podcast. Oh excuse me it's from the creators of Mist. I know it's interesting that. Which isn't is it? interesting because I've never played Mist. It's I one of the oh, ones I, I know of its legend but yeah. I've never played it. Legend speaks of the Mist. <laughs> yes I've played the Mist back in oh my god the 90s I know. <laughs> and, and it was an experience at the time. It was an time. interesting era of gaming, the 90s. <laughs> but I don't know if it comes to VR very naturally. Again, is it not just a walking sim? Or, and if well, it I isn't a walking sim and you're just moving from place to place, basically teleporting, which is what you were well, doing from, in The Mist. I was going to say, from what I know of The Mist, it was basically the witness, but you didn't move. Yeah. But this one looks like you will. So I'm hoping... You'll be able to walk around and explore a very large space, yeah. island, whatever. I'm assuming it'll be another island. The mist was an island. This will probably be an island. So I, I wouldn't mind that because I like a walking sim. I'm a real fan yeah. of everybody's gone to the rapture. I was so say, I'd I be fine with this being like the same. Walking sims, but soma amnesia. You can dress them up with oh. all the horror trappings as you like. The bad guys don't actively attack you. You can easily avoid them. Yes, they are horror-based well, walking sims. That's not fair. No, that it, is, it is what fair. they yeah, are. Well, yes. Okay. Fine. You have points. <laughs> they are glorified walking sims, but they're very good glorified but walking sims. But that's what I was sims. saying. That's what I said. I would normally go, oh, I don't like walking sims, but then there's a niche. So do you think, so, well, would you think, from what you've seen, that this would fall into that category for you? Uh, Have you seen enough? Because we've seen a bit of dev talk I've about it, where they were scaling up motorbikes. Nothing major. So nothing that strikes you that makes you want to go. See, that's probably, that, that doesn't, if that's I not a good sign. If I played the and sort of know what I was getting into, sort of, because it would probably I'll won't tell be you same. don't need to, you've seen enough, of, you know what the mist is from pictures. But yeah, from what but, you've seen of other games you like, this doesn't tickle you at all, which worries me no. because your sort of game is this. So if you don't like it, I probably won't like it. But at the same time, I am, I'm looking forward it'll find to audience, seeing... It'll definitely. find Yeah. There's an audience for it. Yeah. I just don't know who they are. No. I don't know any of these people. If you're oh, one of the people looking forward to the mist, let us know. Earth, so ah. you probably start off on Tutorial Island, so, that famous island that everyone goes to. Tutorial Island. And then we get taken to an alien world, according to this description. 
Oh. So it, it might it is just explore it. It's, I think a lot but... of things were, from what I saw in the trailer, is it's like a, a teleport system. Yeah. So which... everything's been teleported off of Earth. There's lots of rubbish on this planet, like a lot like just yeah. debris. Like that debris. Episode, that scene in The Simpsons with when they open the black hole and they go to that alien universe. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Next up, we have. Pixel Junk VR, which Dead is, Hungry. Which is Job Simulator with a nicer sort of graphics, with nicer a zombie finish. skin. Don't know what I think about this one. It's the cooking the cooking mini game in Job Simulator with zombies. The thing is, I remember playing Bishy Bashy on PS1. <laughs> yeah, you don't know that. I remember playing Bishy Bashy on PS1 with my little sister Lily. And uh, and that's about I think that's a hundred games, all very very tiny button bash simple arcade games that you got from Japan and it all came on one disc. And one of the games was, you know, you get burgers and it's like triangle is lettuce, square is bun, and it goes you know build this burger and you and your mate are against each other and it goes yeah. build a bun and then your mate goes build a bun and you've got to go right uh, triangle circle circle square triangle to like end it with a bun and a bun and then you want to do them right and it goes ping well done. And this feels like that, but that's not, to me, that's not a good thing. No. That was on the PS1, it was a button basher. I don't know if throwing in a load of zombies, personally, is what I was looking for. Because I would Apparently. just play... I mean, if I want to shoot stuff, I'm going to play uh, Super Hot. If I want to cut stuff up, I'm just going to play... Skyrim. No, 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 you're jumping the gun. <laughs> I mean something even more arcadey, because you're super hot for shooting, and then you've slicing fruit slicer what's it called there's only cut fruit, fruit ninja fruit ninja there you go I don't know why I forgot fruit ninja which you've also got for just cutting up things if you want to build a burger I would recommend going and playing job simulator because job simulator is more relaxed yeah. and it has more than one experience in it so you can get more time out of it I don't know if Building burgers with zombies and then nothing else is going to yeah. be the same. But I would I would recommend you go and look you this one up yourself. I mean, yeah, you'll... it's worth going to look at yourself this one. See a trailer. If it appeals to you, then you might like this. Because yeah. if you don't have Job Simulator or you don't have another game to use your move controllers with, it's good to have something. This could be your move controller game if you've never used a move controller. Because you do need something like Job Simulator to stand still and get the hang of using move controllers because it, it, it was a good month of learning no, when was. we first got the headset of how this it functions as a game yeah so that's one to keep your eye out for um uh, stifled which is out but we're going to talk about it anyway because i'm very very curious to try and get this one on the channel I'm, i've been looking on youtube there's been one or two games that have taken this no asset approach Oh, That's what, just I, taking just out all the colour? Yeah, literally just having you play in a black environment and then it only gets revealed in certain intervals. What do you think? Okay, yeah, paint. what do you think about this trend? I kind of like it because it's. Because it's like. Like the VR itself, in a way, it's a new style because this could work with just a microphone. Yes, it could. That's VR one of the is things not that's the clever. Only thing that, you know, you, this doesn't need VR to sell. But it help. So I think that we need more games like this because they are so different. You're not running from... Well, you're running from a monster, but you don't know where that monster is until it's too late. I, I mean, we're both fairly level-headed on the idea that we've seen reviews that have oh, been yeah. fairly 50-50. I mean, uh, PSVR without parole. Thumbs up. Uh, they did a video on it, which made me go, ooh, they're normally pretty honest with their reviews of games. Mm. But I'm not so sure if it'll be a good game, but I think it's worth existing. I think it's oh, yeah. interesting, like you say. I think, a bit like the PS1 era, getting all these really inventive ideas that we yeah. never... You just can't You can't get a game like this in normal flat screen. You well, can't get a flat game like this no. because you don't get the depth perception. You wouldn't be able to... I mean, you can use a microphone, but who's going to? But it's built into the VR headset. You can whisper yeah. and the headset will pick it up. You don't have to shout across the room. It's all so together and working without any setup. You just turn on the headset and you are immersed in being a deaf person. Yeah. Or deaf? Blind. If you were deaf, the game would suck. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's about sound. <laughs> but um, 
But, you know, you sort of see yeah. what I mean, though, because they've sort of taken, it's like, you don't know what's following you. It's almost the Silent Hill of this generation, where they're like... Oh, with the fog, and you just can't see very far. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is, it is. It's that PS1, it's the inventiveness of just going, we can't render very far. Yeah. How can we get around rendering anything at all? And somebody sat there at the meeting and went, what if we had no textures? Then we don't have to render anything. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? <laughs> what about Daredevil? What if we just did white lines? What he sees And just... red lines. So yeah. white lines for objects, red lines for enemies. And then you'd get a perception of sound. And I bet that's where the game came from. They mm. developed it from an idea. And for that alone, I have to admire them. Mm. I have to admire anybody who's got the balls to sit there and go, let's make this game, it's completely I mean, different, does it work? No idea, we'll do it anyway. There was that game that was on the PC where you explored this cave and you painted your way around. Oh. And it was all... Son sonar oh, scanner oh, something. Oh, you, you keep talking, I'm going to look right. that up. But I think it's them, but then there's this another game coming out which is almost the same thing, but instead of like you paint it, it's sort of staticky, video-y, grainy footage. Scanner Sombra. Yeah. Yeah, Scanner Sombra. There you go, I've just looked it up. Scanner Sombra. Yeah. Um, that was the game you were talking about with the lights, where you walk through the cave and you've got sort of the paint, depth the floor. If anyone's ever seen the depth scan, which is done on a heat map, oh, yeah. where it sort of goes from blue to red on how far or something, you do like a scan of a cave, where the guy was blind like he is in Stifle, and he used the depth scanner, didn't he? So you'd scan a wall or the floor, and you'd see if there was a hole in front of you, because yeah. the depth scanner would pick up whether or not it was red, and the same height as your feet, or blue, and it's a big hole. Yeah. Yeah, that was really interesting. Because it then, worked on shadow, so if you're stood yeah. in one area and you shine it one direction, you could walk around the other side of a rock, and you could see where the light had been Again, cut off. Again, it's like going back to my dislike of walking yeah. sims. That is a walking sim. Nothing happens, and that game is terrifying. True. No, you're right, because it's it it. But that sound design and uh, creativity, and isn't it makes it? Yeah. you think there's creatures there that aren't there. <laughs> mm. But that's a short indie experience. But I was going to say something like moved, stifled. I think it's the same people, but they've moved on to a game that I think is coming to PSVR. I forget what it's called, but it's all essentially say it's the same game with video footage. Oh God! You know the you one keep, yes, I do. You keep mentioning games I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> Um, yes, there is another game, and we'll talk about that one next time. We'll make an effort to find it and talk about that in our next Tea Break podcast, because I can't look up that much. But, um, yeah, that did look weird, where you've got what looks like a TV scanner. Yeah. So you're re-scanning a digital... In, in a digital way. Yeah. And I, I think that is in VR, and if it is, that will also be good. And I expect that... That did have a very similar feeling to Scanner Sombra. So I expect it is by the same people, but we'll have to find out what that is yeah. before we can really talk about it. Uh, next, we can let you, the viewers, know what's going down on the channel. Thank the new subs and answer any questions or comments you might have, as well as letting you know how recording and such is going on the channel, as well as the fact that we've carried on the podcast as a whole. We've actually started to run out of time on this particular episode, yeah. so we will wrap it up here and we will finish off by thanking the subscribers that have been new, unless your subscriptions list is private. Then we cannot see who you are, your name won't pop up, so... Mr. Leonard Games, thank you very much for joining us. Peter Barlow, thank you very much for joining us on the sofa. Mouse. Mouse. Want to buy some death sticks? Yeah. <laughs> Want to buy some death sticks? Mouse has joined us. <laughs> We've got Christopher Borisian. Boris. Boris Cano. Nice one meeting. Um, no, it's lovely to have European from the continent. Um, <laughs> Mantis Star and Amanda Rose. And that are the last of the subscribers who are of any interest. We don't want to go back too far. Don't want to, otherwise, we'll be here all day. We could read all the way back through the 180 that we have, but it would take us too long. Thank you very much from DJ Bullet Speed as well. You've been a fantastic fan over the past few weeks and months. Uh, we have really enjoyed reading your comments as well. Thank you very much to Grumpy Aging Gamer from PSVR who said that our comments were um, very helpful. He's dropped a like and subscribed. Ooh. And that was on our Image Blur PSVR one, which I'm very proud of because I put that one together kind of on the fly. But I put it together with genuine advice that I thought would be genuinely useful because I watch other people's videos and they have stuff that in them that's useful but there's stuff every other PSVR helpful video has. So I thought, I know, there's things I never see mentioned like how to put it on, and where to hold the headset, which cables physically 
go, do oh, what. Where? Yeah, and where they go and what they do. I think that's really handy information just for the average user to know. So I'm very grateful that people are enjoying those videos. Yep. Uh, another one from Nick Frost who said, really helpful, mate. He might be English. People that say mate always make me think that they're, they're from Britain. He yeah. probably isn't. None of them are. Probably haven't got a single English comment here. You, you have some cool tips that I haven't seen mentioned in similar videos on other channels, which is literally what I was just saying. So I won't go through all of the my egos. Our ego. It's not just mine. You're on the sofa as well. Yeah. Our egos have been filled enough. But thank you very much for joining us. Lastly, if you enjoyed listening to our British tones, you can find more Tea Break podcasts and our other videos of us making fools of ourselves with me, Mike, Torrin and Darren by subscribing to our YouTube. That's www.youtube.com forward slash sofa of Adam. If you're curious what we have to ramble about day to day, then you can find us on our Twitter, which is also at sofa of Adam. And that's it. I think. Is there anything you wanted to add? No, not this time. No, I think that's everything, isn't it? I think yep. that's everything. Other than the fact that we didn't have time to cover the fact that there are some games coming out later in the month, but we'll do that in our next podcast because yeah. we want to talk about The Exorcist. For some reason, I'm really looking forward to that. I saw The Exorcist films thinking they're a load of crap, and it's like the game. But the VR experience <laughs> might, <laughs> might be good. Yeah. yeah, so there's that we wanted to talk about. There's quite a few horror games coming up we wanted to talk about, and I thought maybe we'd do that in one podcast. we just talk about how Let's horror has been a thing. We may have like bad mouthed Resident Evil slightly and gone. How? Since when? Bad. I in would the never. beginning of the, how you dare. know what I mean. I'm gonna say we were saying it was crap, but like comparing it to Ultra Wings and how. If you want to be Ultra how Wings. immersive it is, then yeah, you were saying about sort of the prettiness factor yeah. sort of detracts from the immersion yeah. level. But I was going to say there's one thing that VR, if anything, has strove in. It is horror. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think anyone that watches our channel will know that that there's certainly horror to be had in PSVR. Help me, please. I want to go home. <laughs> so, lit literally me nearly crying. So, yes, VR is definitely good at doing horror. Yeah. Oh, I did want to talk about Here They Lie. Oh, we'll do that next time. We'll yeah. include. We'll have a horror batch next in our next podcast. We'll do a horror. The horror tea break, even though it's just January. after Christmas. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it's the perfect time for it. <laughs> it might be. It'll perk everybody up. It would perk me up. But that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for listening or having this video on in YouTube in the background. We do our best and we do appreciate you choosing your time to spend with us. So until next time, you stay virtual. And I hope you have a good, well, say a good new year, a pleasant, passable new year. A passable new year. A <laughs> passable new year, just hope this year just goes. <laughs> just, hope, just hope that it goes. And, uh, and hope we just don't lose anybody important along the along way. Along the way, yeah. So welcome to 2018. Thank you for joining the podcast. We will see you all in the next episode of the Tea Break Podcast. Bye. Woo!